Hey, what's up, guys? It's Chris, the Visual Smuggler. Yep, that's right. You may have noticed that the name of this channel has changed. The band that it was associated with, Counterweight, is no longer together. And uh, I'll spare you the gory details, but basically I decided that uh, a lot of the videos on here that were popular were the tutorial videos. So I thought, hey, why not turn this into a tutorial channel? So basically what I'm going to be doing is a lot of music related uh, graphic design, some motion design, pretty much anything anyone wants to learn. If you guys have something, let me know in the comments below. I would love to try to create that for you, show you how to do it. It's all about helping bands learn and to do things on their own. And I'm not trying to take away from any professional designers out there, but sometimes it's just nice to know how to do things for yourself. So that said, uh, let's dive right in. So in a previous video, I actually showed you guys how to make a heavy metal hardcore type of flyer. And one of the viewers asked, hey, you know, this was really cool, but can you show us how to make a punk rock flyer? So I decided to do my best interpretation of a punk rock flyer, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to drag this in. And this is what I'll be showing you. This flyer is basically the kind of punk flyer that me and my friends used to make when we were in seventh grade. Basically, what we would do is take like a magazine picture or some kind of background. And then in Microsoft Word, we would actually type all of our text in various different fonts, you know, the logos for bands and the info and everything like that. And then we would actually just cut it out with scissors tape or glue it onto the magazine page and then put all of that onto a photocopier and that was our flyer we'd make about six million of them and then about 10 people would show up to the show but anyway this is how we made flyers and i'm going to show you how to digitally make a flyer that looks like what we would have done in seventh grade uh this is my version of a punk rock flyer it's kind of you know it's got a DIY kind of aspect to it, kind of grungy. So let's dive right in. All right, so we're going to start with the background. And this is actually a picture I found online. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know who this band is, but I thought it was a really cool picture to try to work with because of the pose that the guitar player is making. And uh, I really just honestly, I want to know who is this guy? Why is he up there? What is he doing? Why is he behind the band? Is he a stage potato? Who knows? Anyway, the way I'm going to design the flyer is having all of the logos. If you can see me drawing here, I'm going to have all the logos descending on this side where the marquee is. And I kind of want them going around the guitar player. I'm going to use him as kind of a guide to where the logos are going to go. And then, of course, at the top, I'll have some info like the date. And at the bottom, I'll have info for the venue. So let's get started with the logos, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. Basically, what I did was I made them black, just black text on a white background. And what we're going to do essentially is cut them out. Now, we want to maintain the look of, you know, how it would look like if a seventh grader had a pair of scissors and went to town. So I'm just going to haphazardly cut these out with the pen tool. It's over here. It's this little pen looking tool. And I'm just going to plot some points and I want to make sure that it just looks kind of jagged and like a seventh grader got a hold of a pair of scissors and just, you know, thought, hey, this is a good way to do this. Marketing 101. So I'm just plotting points and I want to make it kind of jagged. I mean, you can come in here and make little marks like that. And then we want it, the points here to be kind of sharp. There we go. And so I have it all cut out. And what I'm going to do is go in the middle here and right click and choose make selection. Pull this little guy in this little screen or this little uh, menu popped in. Uh, I'm going to make sure that the feather radius is set to zero because we want to make sure that we maintain that jagged edge. We want it to look like a paper cutout. So we don't want soft feathered edges. So we'll keep that at zero. Just click OK. And now you can see it created a marquee and all I'm going to do is copy and paste. So basically what I'm going to do is go up to edit, copy merged. You can also use the hotkeys, shift, control, C. I'm going to copy merged. Let's go over to our background picture and paste or control V. So there we go. There's our first cutout and I'm going to use the pointer tool and we're just going to kind of place this. This is, I'm assuming the headlining band. At least that's how I had the other flyer set up. And voice of addiction is at the top. So I'm going to just manipulate the transform controls so that we can get that 
nicely placed right by his head. And what you can do if you want, you can even rotate this just a little bit just to kind of make it look a little, you know, DIY, a little janky. And then we'll click enter. And that one is placed. Now let's go grab the others. And I'm actually going to, you know, I'm going to do this in real time. If you want to fast forward, you're welcome to. But uh, I'm just going to show you how I go about cutting these out. You know, it'll be fun. Uh, arts and crafts time. So if to get rid of this marquee tool, if you're like, oh, I want to, you know, I want to start a new one, you can just do control D, it deselects. And then uh, if you want to bring it back, just control Z comes back. So anyway, control D, get rid of that. So we're going to cut out hex bombs and hex bombs. I want to have some sharp edges. So I'm going to start here and just plop my points around. Maybe we'll come in for some reason. We like cut in like that. There we go. Everything's just going to look jagged and kind of crazy. Come up like that. I mean, you make it look like you cut even like too close <laughs> to the text because that used to happen to me all the time. And then we'll close it off there again. Right click, make selection, feather radius zero. And there's our nice little marquee. I'm just going to do control shift C to copy merge. That copies the background and the text together because they are separate. We'll go to our main image, control V, and there's hex bombs. I'm going to use the transform control tool to just resize it. And this one I do kind of want a little more rotated. Like almost around the head of the guitar like that. That looks kind of cool. And remember, I want these, you know, floating around the guitar player. Basically, remember, he's our guide. So we're going to kind of go whoosh, whoosh around him. And that one's nicely placed. So I'll just click enter. You can also just double click on it. But sometimes you run the risk of it moving if you do that, uh, if you have sticky fingers. So you can just click enter. So we'll go back and I will cut out the next two. Remember, control D to deselect the marquee. We've got squared off and I want to make this one look kind of nuts. So I'm going to start way out here and I'm going to do this like, like someone just got crazy with the scissors. <laughs> All right, come up here come down. We'll make a look at this little spike thing hanging off. Come around here. That happened. <laughs> And I'll just kind of make this quick. There we go. All right. We will make selection, zero feather, control shift C, and place it. Ooh, that's big. So we're going to click the pointer tool. Uh, there's a technical term for this, but I call it the pointer tool. It's actually, there you go, the move tool. You can also click V if you're into the hotkeys. Transform control tools, we will move this and I want to rotate this one, but I want it to actually be opposite of how hex bombs is going. So we're going to rotate the other way to almost go, you know, like a vanishing point with the guitar neck. You have no idea what I mean by vanishing point. I'm sorry, unless you know photos and, and photographic composition, you're like, what does that mean? Anyway, I'm going to put this guy kind of here. We don't want to take up all the real estate on the image, but at the same time we, we do, <laughs> we, you know, the, the band logos are the most important part of a flyer because that's who people are going to come see. Right. So we will press enter. That's good. Okay. Squared off. And we have one more and I'll just speed this one up. So you guys don't have to sit through this one. All right, cool. And we got headless honchos on there. They definitely have a the longest name. Well, actually, no voice. I guess voice of addiction is the longest. But anyway, headless honchos. And we're going to let them kind of bleed into the picture a little bit. But we are going to make them smallest because they are the opening band. And opening bands just never get any love, man. I tell you. I've been there many, many a time. We're going to just rotate this just a little more. We don't want it to be just like in line with hex bombs, but at the same time, 
you know, DIY. It's it again. It's like some kid just cut out a bunch of pieces of paper and slapped them on a flyer. You know, play around with the transform controls, the size of things, the position. Make sure something is where you want it to be. Don't just place it the way I place it and then you think you're done. You know, definitely make something like this your own. You know, watch this for the technique and the theory, not to redo what I did. We've got our bands. And what I want to do is take up a little more real estate with all the logos. So these layers here, layers two, three, four, and five, those are the cutouts. So what I'm going to do is highlight all of those. And I want to resize them all at the same time. And to make it easier than having to highlight them every time, I'm just going to do control G. And that puts them in a group. It puts them in their own folder. So you can still get to them within the folder. But it makes it so you can edit all of them together at the same time. So now I'm just going to make them just a little bigger. Again, I don't want to get into the guitar player's head there. Maybe stretch just a little bit. There we go. So we've got our bands and we've still got a whole lot of real estate up top and down below. We're going to put in some information. So let's start with the date. Uh, I'm just going to turn off the logos here. Make that easy. Deselect that marquee. And I'm going to come in here. And the date of the show is September 14th. So I'm going to choose center just so it kind of all writes out easily. September 14. And underneath that, I want it to say punk rock show. If you think that's cheesy, well, oh well. We want to let the world know what kind of music they're getting into. I'm going to make this just a little smaller. Then the September 14th, we want to make sure the date is is the thing that people see. People make flyers all the time. And they forget to put the date. And it's like, dude, <laughs> you want people to come to the show, right? So I'm going to change the font. Uh, I have a font that I like to use called Dharma Bum. You can get that on defont.com. I'll leave a little interstitial graphic to show you defont.com's link. I'll also link it down below for those of you that want to find that. I'm actually going to make the text so that the characters, the individual characters, uh, the letters and the numbers are a little further apart. So we just take up a little more real estate, still readable. And then the text size, I'm going to change just a bit too. That's good. Yeah, that looks good. Right like that. Cool. Actually, <laughs> never satisfied. I'm going to make... So it's right underneath September 14th. Okay, there is September 14th, Punk Rock Show. So that's what this is what will be at the top of the flyer. Now let's make what's going to be at the bottom of the flyer, and that's all the rest of the info, uh, the venue, the time, the price if you want to do that, definitely the address, <laughs> which, which brings me to something I'll bring up a little later. But anyway, so this specific show is actually going to be played at the Liars Club in Chicago. So I'm going to put Liars Club. For some reason, this font doesn't have an apostrophe, so I'm just going to find one real quick. There we go. That'll work. And then I'm going to bring these characters in just so they're not all spaced all kind of crazy like that with the apostrophe. What I'm doing is holding down Alt and moving the arrow keys left and right. It brings individual characters closer without mucking up the entire thing. So anyway, we've got Liars Club. The time of the show is actually at 9 p.m. And the show is actually 21 and over. You know, super, super punk rock, right? So let's do 21 plus. And then we want to put the address of the Liars Club, which is 1665 West Fullerton in Chicago, Illinois. And of course we want Chicago, Illinois. What the hell is up with the G? <laughs> okay, whoever created this font was just, you know, on something, I guess, I don't know. I'm gonna move these 
lines uh, separate just a little bit because I'm actually going to do these as separate cutouts. It'll look kind of cool. But anyway, so we've got Liars Club, 9 p.m., 21 up, and all of our info. So let's cut it out. I'm just going to cut out the September 14th really quick. I'll speed it up so you don't have to sit through it. Okay, so now we have our information on the flyer. September 14th, Punk Rock Show. I'm actually going to bring it down just a little bit, but I'm going to stretch it out just a bit too. So it takes up all that real estate at the top. And then I'm going to, oops, I'm going to rotate it. And what I want to do is kind of push it up a little bit so that this piece kind of gets cut off at the top. And you'll see the method to my madness here in a second doing that. You're probably like, well, why would you want that cut off like that? Uh, the reason being is because remember, we want to make this look like it was a DIY flyer. Like somebody just put this together real quick. They cut out pieces of paper. They, you know, glued them onto a, a background. And let's say that you threw it on the photocopier and <laughs> this one piece was just kind of like off of the copier a little bit, you know, something like that. We just want to make it look a little more raw, a little more real. So there we go. September 14th, Punk Rock Show. That looks good. Now let's get the rest of our information on the bottom there. And there's going to be more to what I'm doing. It's not just cut this stuff out, throw it on the flyer. We're going to make it look a little more realistic. So just bear with me. Let me cut all these out and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I have my information on the flyer and I'm going to stylize these a little bit, but I want you guys to walk with me as I do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually stretch these out a bit till we take up a little more of the bottom here. I'm going to make them a little smaller too. Just kind of stretched and squished and, you know, any any designer watching this is probably like, oh God, what are you doing? Why are you stretching things? <laughs> But, you know, again, we're trying to make this look raw, real, sort of DIY. So we want to have some fun. I just want to make these look like little strips of paper. Little strips of crappily cut out paper. Of course, any real punk would be like, you know, why wouldn't you just do the Microsoft Word way and actually have cut those out, you know, like a like a real punk. And I'd be like, well, because I know how to use Photoshop and it's easier, I guess. Just move this down toward the bottom. And we're going to squish it just a little more. We don't want to take over the guitar player too much. You know, we want to make sure that he is still a highlight of the flyer. And we're just going to pull the sides out a little more. And then I am going to make sure that those are centered. So to do that, I'm going to use the align tools. And what I'm aligning everything to is to the background. So I have the three layers highlighted, the background, and then we will go to the align tools and this will center. And you see, they just jump just a little bit, but you know, it's all about the aesthetic. Okay, guys. So I have all of my information on the flyer. It looks pretty good, right? Well, there's one more thing I want to do, and this is going to give it a little more realism. So I'm going to go to group one and that's our logos. And I'm going to go to effects and drop shadow. And you'll see all of a sudden they have this shadow behind them, but it's a little on the dark side. So what I'm going to do is just scale it back a little bit. Maybe increase the size some. Not too much. We just want a small degree of separation. And basically what it's going to do, I'm going to bump this to maybe 45. Yeah, that looks good. What it's going to do is create a shadow behind all of these different cutouts. And basically, when we used to do this when I was younger, you know, even if you had everything as flat as could be on the photocopier, sometimes it would still come out with a shadow behind it. And you could tell that a piece of paper had been glued on or taped on to a background. But it doing this, it gives it some realism. It's also going to give you a little bit of separation so that they pop a little bit. So what I'm going to do with that drop shadow, since I'm happy with it, I'm not, I don't have to go and do that exact same thing to all the other layers. I can do a real easy method where I go copy layer style 
And we'll just highlight all of the other cutout layers and we will do paste layer style. So it pastes them all on, you can collapse them. It's just an easy way of copying the effects that you do without having to redo them over and over and over. So now we have a little bit of shadow separation on our quote unquote pieces of paper and everything looks good. There's just one more thing I have to add and I'll be right back. All right guys, so I'm back and I'm just gonna pop this in here. This is the production company that's putting on the show. We'll just assume it's DIY Promoter. I'm gonna make the image just a little bigger. There we go. And I'm gonna rotate it and then sit it right down on top of here. Because, you know, we want to give the promoter some love, too. We want to make sure that, you know, they book the show. You should know who booked the show. So if they book more shows, you can go to those shows. Shows. All right. There we go. And we have the promoter on there. We have the date. We have the venue, the time, the address. Oh, and here's that thing that I wanted to get to. Have you ever seen a flyer where it said, if you want to know where the show is, ask a punk? Here's this. Here's my personal opinion. Okay. What the f would you ever put that on a flyer? If you want to know where the show is, ask somebody. So if so, I can just walk up to any random crust punk and be like, hey, do you know where the show is today? They would look at me, flip me off, and probably spit in my face. Like, what, what are you talking about? Do I know where the show is? What show? And I'd be like, oh, you don't know where the show is either? Let's go find a different punk who knows where the show is. Seriously, ask a punk. Like, don't, don't put that on flyers. Just put the address. You know, if you're throwing a house show... Okay, I understand that's different. You don't want a million people, but then don't throw a house show if you don't want people to show up. If you're throwing it at a venue, no one needs to ask a punk. Just put the freaking address, okay? Anyway, guys, I closed off that one window, and this is our finished flyer for the punk rock show, the uh, Voice of Addiction, Hex Bombs, Squared Off, Headless Honchos, September 14th, Liars Club, 9 p.m., 21 plus. We got everything we need, Wrecking Ball Productions. Pretty much good to go. And it was relatively easy to make. You know, I know it takes a while to watch me walk through it, but once you do it yourself and you put it together, you can actually come up with a really cool flyer like this. And you don't even need to use this kind of picture with them going on the side. You can use another picture, uh, like one that I have that I'll show you. You know, this one of this dude jumping. You know, if maybe if you're making a hardcore flyer or something like that, or even for punk rock, you've got all this real estate underneath the guy as he's making that jump where you can put information, logos, uh, any, anything you can throw in there, and it would still look like a really cool flyer. So, you know, use your background to your advantage. Definitely take advantage of it. Make it look cool. So I hope this helped you guys out. And if you have any more suggestions for stuff you'd like to see or learn how to do, let me know. I'm the Visual Smuggler, and uh, best of luck.